If we were to stop the average American on the street and ask them to name the most powerful families in America, their thoughts might initially be drawn to the storied dynasties whose names echo through the halls of the White House, like the Kennedys or Roosevelts. Alternatively, our sidewalk philosophers might have their minds raced to families who have become emblematic of wealth and influence. Their legacies intertwined with the very notion of American greatness, such as the Rockefellers or Astors. Yet, in 21st century America, true power on a familial scale most often resides in all of these places at once. Business, entertainment, politics, and even architecture. In these strata, influence is the most coveted treasure, expertly navigated by those who understand its nuances. Thus, with 11 living members, both men and women, consistently listed among the richest people in America, as well as holding the reins of power at America's most illustrious university, Harvard, and the governorship of Illinois, the Pritzker dynasty, has carved out a niche that transcends the conventional pathways to power, asserting their dominance with a combination of astute business acumen and a keen eye for the evolving landscape of global influence. In today's episode, we tell their full rags-to-riches tale from the gloomy streets of the former Russian Empire to an eleven-figure fortune reigning over America, as we describe. The Pritzkers, the old money family that secretly rules America. The Pritzker clan, a veritable American powerhouse, keeps making waves in the world of big bucks and big philanthropy, nailing a spot on the Forbes billionaires list year after year. With a jaw-dropping combined wealth of 43.1 billion as of 2024, and 11 members strutting their stuff on the world's richest runway, it's clear they're not just playing the game, they're rewriting the rules. And at the heart of their gold mine is the Hyatt Hotels Corporation, a behemoth in the hospitality industry that keeps their coffers overflowing. For example, if you take a leisurely ride to 1261 Angelo Drive in Los Angeles, you'll stumble upon the Pritzker Estate, a monument to opulence that makes the average mansion look like a garden shed. Built for billionaire Anthony Pritzker, this architectural titan is the talk of the town, fondly dubbed the Grand Hyatt Bel Air by those in the know. With a whopping 49,000 square feet of luxury, including everything from a bowling alley to a restaurant-sized kitchen, this place is less a home and more a small kingdom. And because they're conscientious monarchs, they've decked it out with all the eco-friendly trimmings, geothermal systems, solar panels, and more green gadgets than you can shake a stick at. But the Pritzkers don't just throw cash at grandiose homes. They're also big on brain power, pouring millions into the hallowed halls of academia. The Pritzker School of Law and the Pritzker School of Medicine are just a couple of the ivory towers graced with their name, thanks to their eye-watering donations. It's like everything they touch turns to scholarly gold. Not ones to rest on their laurels, the Pritzkers also have a soft spot for the arts and civic engagement. Cue the J. Pritzker Pavilion in Chicago, a cultural jewel that's as much a feast for the eyes as it is for the soul. It's all part of their master plan to sprinkle a little Pritzker magic across the cityscape, fostering community spirit and cultural vibrancy. And let's not forget the Pritzker Prize in Architecture, the creme de la creme of design accolades. Dreamed up by Jay and Cindy Pritzker, it's like the Oscars for architects, complete with a bronze medallion and a hefty cash prize. Since its inception, it's become the gold standard for architectural excellence, celebrating visionaries who shape our world one building at a time. The Pritzker Pack isn't just about splurging on luxury or backing the next architectural marvel. They're also knee-deep in the political arena, and they've got the chops to prove it. For instance, J.B. Pritzker isn't just any governor, he's the man steering Illinois with a vision that's as bold as it is controversial. His Rebuild Illinois plan is a historic makeover for the state's bones, including everything from the internet cables to the school corridors. And let's not forget turning the state's financial frown upside down, with budgets balanced like a yogi and credit scores jumping up like they're on a trampoline. 
Of course, his path hasn't been all roses and rainbows. Remember the 2018 campaign, as well as his recent migrant crisis fiascos. But we'll talk about that more a bit later. Then there's Penny Pritzker, who danced through the corridors of power as the US Secretary of Commerce like she owned them, putting trade, innovation and economic growth at the top of her playlist. With a knack for navigating the cyber seas and cracking down on trade tricksters, she was the administration's ace in the hole. But her backstory has its own shadow, thanks to the superior bank's tumble into the abyss. As chairwoman and later a board member, she was in the thick of it when the bank doubled down on risky business, leading to a crash that left more than a few depositors high and dry. Thus, in the grand Pritzker narrative, it's clear. From opulent digs and scholarly grants to the gritty world of politics, they're painting a picture that's as complex as it is captivating. With each move, they're not just etching their name in history, they're weaving a saga that spans the spectrum from glittering success to gritty controversy. However, our next question becomes, how did an upstart hotel chain birth one of the world's richest families, especially when their patriarch wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth? Let's roll back the clock and find out in the next chapter. In the latter part of the 19th century, the Pritzker family embarked on a journey from Ukraine, then a segment of the Russian Empire to the shores of America, propelled by the aspiration for a more promising future and the evasion of the political and religious tribulations that marred their existence in their native land. This odyssey heralded the emergence of a lineage that would ascend to become among the most affluent and beneficent in the United States. And Nicholas Pritzker, the family's forebear, made his way to Chicago from a vicinity near Kiev, Ukraine, in 1881, motivated by the imperative to elude the severe anti-Semitic pogroms and the oppressive regime that beleaguered Jews within the Russian Empire. His migration was synchronous with a broader exodus of Jews from Eastern Europe to the United States, a migration fueled by economic destitution, sectarian violence, and the quest for liberty and better prospects. Upon his arrival in Chicago, Nicholas Pritzker confronted the myriad challenges that were commonplace for immigrants of that era. His initial endeavors ranged from selling newspapers to self-education in English, culminating in his certification as a pharmacist. Such tenacity and perseverance laid the groundwork for what would become the Pritzker family's illustrious trajectory in America. Nicholas's pursuit of higher education led him to DePaul University College of Law, where, upon graduation, he commenced his legal practice, setting the stage for the Pritzker family's prominence in the American corporate landscape. Then, in 1902, Nicholas established a law practice, symbolizing the nascent stages of the Pritzker family's elevation in America. His progeny, Abram Nicholas, Harry and Jack, treaded his path, initially embarking on legal careers before diverging into realms of business and real estate investment. Abram Nicholas Pritzker, notably, was instrumental in the family's transition from the legal field to the vast expanse of commerce. A Harvard Law graduate of 1920, Abram Nicholas ventured beyond the confines of legal practice alongside his brother Jack in 1936, engaging in real estate and small business ventures, predominantly within the Chicago vicinity. The business endeavors of the Pritzker brothers were not merely successful, but were indeed revolutionary, swiftly accruing a substantial fortune. And their astute investments, coupled with the formation of multiple trusts to shield their earnings from onerous taxation, laid the cornerstone for the burgeoning Pritzker commercial dynasty. This legacy of entrepreneurship and financial wisdom was bequeathed to Abram Nicholas's offspring, J. Arthur Robert Allen, and Donald Nicholas, who inherited and further augmented their father's and uncle's business, sagacity and entrepreneurial zeal. Soon, their collective efforts would not only cement the Pritzker family's status as a powerhouse in the American economic sphere, but also underscored a remarkable saga of immigrant success and contribution to the nation's business and philanthropic landscapes. In the bossing economic landscape of post-war America, Robert Pritzker emerged as a luminary in the realm of business, significantly shaping the trajectory of the Pritzker family's ventures. 
His noteworthy journey began in 1953, a time when the American dream was ripe for the taking, and innovation was the currency of success. Along with his brother Jay, Robert made a decisive move by acquiring the Colson Company, a firm on the brink of collapse, known for its bicycles and hospital supplies. This pivotal moment not only saved a failing enterprise, but also laid the foundation for what would evolve into one of the nation's most formidable private conglomerates, the Marmon Group. With a background solidified by an engineering degree from the Illinois Institute of Technology, Robert brought a precise and analytical approach to the conglomerate's expansion. The Marmon Group flourished under his stewardship, embodying a strategy of growth through the judicious selection of diverse businesses. The brothers Pritzker pursued a path less trodden, focusing on the inherent value of each acquisition rather than the allure of intercompany synergies. This philosophy of independence for each entity under the Marmon umbrella fostered an environment where innovation and efficiency thrived, propelling the group to encompass over 130 companies, among them transunion and manufacturers of essential goods from railroad tank cars to medical devices. But Robert's strategic prowess was not confined to the Marmon Group. He also played a critical role in other family endeavors, notably the Hyatt Hotel chain and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, underscoring his versatility and foresight in recognizing and capitalizing on emerging business opportunities. You see, the genesis of the Hyatt Empire traces back to a seemingly mundane observation by Jay Pritzker, at a cafe near the Los Angeles International Airport. The insight into the unmet demand for convenient, high-quality accommodations near airports led to the acquisition of the Hyatt House Motel, a transaction famously initiated on a napkin. This impulsive decision marked the beginning of a revolutionary approach to hospitality, blending luxury with accessibility to cater to the needs of the modern business traveler. Subsequently, Jay, along with his brother Donald, embarked on a mission to redefine the hospitality landscape. They introduced a model that seamlessly integrated the luxury of high-end hotels with the practicality of airport proximity. This strategy not only expanded the Hyatt brand across the United States, but also redefined the expectations of business travelers. And Donald Pritzker's contribution to this empire, though less heralded, was no less significant. His operational ingenuity was pivotal in scaling the Hyatt brand to global prominence. Perhaps his most notable achievement was his involvement in the creation of the Hyatt Regency Atlanta. The hotel's daring design, featuring a 21-story atrium, not only captivated guests, but also set a new benchmark in hotel architecture and the overall guest experience. Next, the expansion of the Hyatt brand continued unabated, marking its international footprint with the opening of a hotel in Hong Kong in 1969. This move was supported by the establishment of Hyatt International Corporation, a testament to the Pritzker's strategic foresight in nurturing the brand's global expansion. And the early 70s onward was a period of vigorous expansion for the Pritzker holdings. They broadened their business interests into real estate and other ventures, leveraging financial resources such as a significant line of credit from the First National Bank of Chicago. And despite facing internal disputes in the 1990s that challenged the cohesion and direction of their empire, the Pritzker family's strategic acumen saw them through. Soon, they would take their newfangled wealth and do what so many old money families do when they have a boatload of cash, get into politics. In the landscape of Illinois politics, J.B. Pritzker's rise to the governor's office in 2019 represents a complex fusion of a distinguished family heritage with a deeply ingrained dedication to societal contribution, illuminated through a series of accomplishments and some disputes. Now, Pritzker's upbringing was characterized by both advantage and profound loss. The early death of his parents instilled in him an enduring sense of duty and an eagerness to contribute to the public good, echoing his family's philanthropic and civic traditions. His political career was initiated well before his bid for governor. His initial forays into politics, aiding figures like Representative Tom Lantos and Senator Terry Sanford, 
set the stage for his later public service engagements. Although his 1998 congressional campaign did not succeed, Pritzker's dedication to political and social causes remained steadfast. His ventures into the business world, notably the creation of the 1871 non-profit business incubator, showcased his commitment to economic growth and innovation. Upon assuming the governorship in 2019, Pritzker's platform was heavily influenced by his familial legacy and personal convictions, prioritizing social and economic reform and advocating for progressive values. His tenure has been marked by efforts to enhance early education, healthcare and economic progress. For example, his administration has celebrated the passage of balanced budgets, augmentation of public school resources, the prohibition of assault weapons and the implementation of the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. These efforts mirror Pritzker's determination to use his office to advance the well-being of Illinois residents, a reflection of the principles instilled in him early on. Nevertheless, Pritzker's governance has been accompanied by controversy, particularly regarding his campaign financing strategies, employing substantial personal funds, leading to debates on the role of wealth in politics. The property tax incident involving allegations of tax fraud related to a mansion's valuation added layers to the discourse on ethics and governance, despite Pritzker's dismissal of the allegations as politically motivated. Further challenges arose around policies on policing, crime and immigration. The enactment of the Criminal Justice Reform Bill, particularly its provision to eliminate cash bail, faced strong opposition from law enforcement and Republican legislators who contended it could undermine public safety. Similarly, the Safety Act, sustaining the bail reform, faced legal and public scrutiny, criticized by law enforcement agencies as detrimental to their operational effectiveness. And on immigration, Pritzker's policies have drawn criticism for purportedly encouraging non-citizen migration to Illinois, with detractors pointing to initiatives offering health care to immigrants, irrespective of legal status, and limiting local law enforcement's collaboration with federal immigration authorities. The allocation of significant budgetary resources for migrant support has sparked debates over state priorities, with critics arguing it favors non-citizens over Illinois residents. Next, in a climate where the interplay between public policy and private enterprise is more critical than ever, Penny Pritzker's career trajectory embodies the convergence of these two realms. As the 38th United States Secretary of Commerce under President Barack Obama, Pritzker leveraged her considerable experience from both sectors to spur economic growth and innovation at a time when the digital landscape was rapidly evolving and global trade dynamics were increasingly complex. Confirmed by the Senate with an overwhelming majority, her tenure was characterized by a pragmatic approach to bolstering American commerce. Pritzker spearheaded initiatives that expanded the digital economy, fortified intellectual property protections, and pursued trade agreements aimed at bolstering the US economy. A notable achievement was the formation of the Digital Economy Board of Advisors, drawing leaders from tech and academia to steer policy on emerging digital issues, ensuring the US remained a beacon of innovation and commerce in the digital age. Moreover, under her watch, the expansion of the intellectual property attaché program was pivotal in protecting U.S. tech innovations abroad, an essential step in maintaining America's competitive edge in global markets. The establishment of the Commerce Data Advisory Council under her guidance underscored the significance of data in economic planning and innovation, facilitating a better understanding and use of government-published data by businesses. Pritzker's diplomatic skills were also put to the test in international arenas, notably in negotiating the EU-US Privacy Shield Agreement, crucial for data transfers across the Atlantic. Her outreach to Cuba following diplomatic thawing efforts marked a historical pivot towards potentially altering long-standing economic isolations. Yet Pritzker's leadership journey has not been without its controversies, particularly in her role as senior fellow of the Harvard Corporation. The resignation of Harvard President Claudine Gay amid a storm of controversies, including issues of campus anti-Semitism and plagiarism, has drawn intense scrutiny towards Pritzker's stewardship. 
Critics, including notable Harvard alumni, have questioned the rigor of the presidential selection process and the subsequent oversight, putting Pritzker's decision-making under the microscope. And Pritzker's role at Harvard has been further complicated by her family's significant philanthropic contributions to the university, including a $100 million donation for a new economics building months before her appointment as senior fellow. This has led some to question whether her financial ties to the university may have influenced the corporation's decisions, highlighting the demands of leadership in the complex ecosystem of higher education, but also the intricate balance between philanthropy and governance. However, the political generation of the Pritzkers is just one side of a multifaceted empire that seems intent on expanding with each decade. In the next chapter, we'll investigate the millennial and Gen Z members of the family and what they're up to. Today, the descendants of the storied Pritzker family are not merely resting on their laurels, but are actively expanding their reach into technology, real estate, finance and politics, demonstrating a versatile command over the modern economic landscape. Amid this landscape, Adam Pritzker stands out for his entrepreneurial ventures, particularly in education and fashion. Born into the prestigious Pritzker lineage in July 1984 in San Francisco, California, Adam's journey was shaped by a blend of familial legacy and personal ambition. A graduate of Columbia University with a BA in Anthropology in 2008, his academic endeavors extended beyond the classroom to collaborations with esteemed personalities like Jeffrey Sachs at the Earth Institute. And in 2011, Adam co-launched General Assembly, an avant-garde educational institution designed to fill the void between traditional academic offerings and the demands of today's workforce. Offering courses in technology, design and entrepreneurship, General Assembly expanded rapidly worldwide. As Chief Creative Officer, Adam played a pivotal role in sculpting the institution's trajectory. The sale of General Assembly to the ADECO Group for upwards of $400 million underscored Adam's influential presence in the education sector. And Adam's personal narrative is closely interwoven with his professional and philanthropic pursuits. His marriage to Sophie McNally in 2016, with the couple residing in Beverly Hills and Montecito, California, adds a personal dimension to his expansive career. Furthermore, Gigi Pritzker, another illustrious member of the Pritzker family, has etched her name in the film production and business sectors. Her academic pursuit in anthropology at Stanford University led her to a deep-seated passion for documentary filmmaking. This passion culminated in the co-foundation of Odd Lot Entertainment with Deborah Del Prete in Culver City, California, setting the stage for a distinguished career in the entertainment industry marked by productions such as Rabbit Hole, Drive and Hell or High Water. And Gigi's resolve to forge her own path was evident in her early rejection of a predetermined role in the family business, choosing instead to immerse herself in film production. Her ascent from a production assistant to a recognized film producer illustrates her dedication and skill. As of 2024, her net worth reflects not only her professional achievements, but also her inheritance, standing at an impressive 5.2 billion US dollars. But her influence extends to philanthropic efforts, with roles on the boards of esteemed cultural and educational institutions, including the Sundance Institute Board of Trustees and the Goodman Theatre of Chicago. And membership in the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences speaks to her active participation in the film community. Now, in the realm of business and philanthropy, few stories captivate as much as those involving figures who have seamlessly transitioned between dramatically different stages of their careers. Liesl Pritzker Simmons embodies such a transition, moving from a celebrated child actress to a pivotal player in the world of impact investing and philanthropy. Born into the Pritzker family on the 14th of March, 1984, her early foray into the entertainment industry saw her capturing the imaginations of audiences worldwide. Under the stage name, Liesl Matthews, she delivered memorable performances in A Little Princess and Air Force One, showcasing a depth of talent that belied her young age. 
Yet, Liesel's journey took an unexpected detour from the glitz of Hollywood to the complex world of legal and financial maneuvering following a family dispute. At 18, she initiated legal proceedings against members of her own family, challenging the management and allocation of the Pritzker fortune, famously associated with the Hyatt Hotel Empire. This lawsuit, rooted in claims of mismanagement and improper asset distribution, culminated in a significant settlement for Liesel and her brother Matthew, estimated at around a whopping $500 million. This legal confrontation brought to light critical issues surrounding family governance and the management of trust funds, marking a turning point in Liesel's life. Opting to leverage her newfound financial independence for broader societal impact, Liesel, with her husband Ian Simmons, launched the Blue Haven Initiative. This endeavor reflects a commitment to impact investing, a strategy aimed at generating not only financial returns, but also addressing pressing social and environmental issues. Moreover, Liesel's philanthropic ambitions extend beyond her investment activities. She's a co-founder of the IDP Foundation, an organization dedicated to enhancing educational opportunities across Africa, further underscoring her commitment to leveraging wealth for social good. Therefore, what sets the Pritzker clan apart is not just their sprawling economic empire, but their cohesive unit's ability to stay aligned with a core set of values amidst diversifying interests. The family's governance structures and philanthropic efforts serve as the glue that binds individual ambitions to collective goals. As the Pritzkers navigate the complexities of the 21st century, they do so with a keen awareness of their heritage and a forward-looking approach to business and philanthropy. The seamless integration of the next generation into the family's diverse interests highlights a remarkable adaptability and a unified vision for the future. Whether through advancements in technology, strategic real estate investments, or influential political engagements, the Pritzker family remains a formidable force in shaping the economic and social fabric of the nation. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Which secretly powerful American family empire would you like us to feature next on this channel? We love hearing from you and always appreciate your support. We look forward to your thoughts and thanks again for joining us on another episode of Old Money Luxury. Cheers, until next time.